Today we're going to talk about chapter 5.1 from Algebra 2, which is the properties of exponents. So first thing we should look at is the actual table that tells you your different properties. You have your product, product of powers, power of power, you have power of a product, negative exponent, zero exponent, quotient of powers, and power of a quotient. Now, this table is in your guys' book, so you don't have to write it down right here. If you guys want to pause it and do it, go ahead. I'm going to go over some examples. I'm not even going to look at this, this page right here. So let's look at this. First is the product of powers. When I have a to the m times a to the n. So I'm multiplying those things with my base is the same. Notice my base is the same. It's a and a. What we're going to do is all we're going to do is we're going to add the exponents. So when I have b to the fourth times b to the sixth times b to the seventh, really this is the same thing as b to the negative fourth plus six plus seven. All you do is you add those exponents. So negative four plus six is two plus seven is nine. So it becomes simplified to b to the ninth. Now let's look at this next problem where we have multiplied 2m times 4m cubed. So first thing we're going to do is we can multiply those numbers times each other. So we can take the 4 and the 2 and multiply those to become m, or sorry, 8. And now we can take our m to the first, because there's an imaginary 1 there. It's not imaginary, we just don't write it because we're lazy. So it becomes m to the 1 plus 3, which is m to the fourth. So it's 8m to the fourth. That is your product of powers. Now, power to a power, what you actually do is when I have a to the m to the nth, so I have a power raised to a power, I'm going to multiply them. So x to the third to the second, it's really the same thing as, so I'm going to show you why this works, because really this is the same thing as x to the third times x to the third. That would be x squared, right? Because squared means you multiply it times itself. So then you go back to your product of a power, and you add those, so it becomes x to the 3 plus 3, which is the same thing as x to the 6th. Well, over here, with the power of a product, what you do is you multiply 3 times 2, so it really becomes x to the 6th. So this over here is why it works, and really you can just do the simplest, simple way of doing it is just multiply the, exponent, the exponents by each other. All right, power of a product. Let's try this again now. What you have to make sure is when I have 2x cubed, and again, I'm going to show you why this works. It's really 2x times 2x times 2x. But really fast, easy way we can do this is put that 3 through to each piece. So this is really 2 to the third times x to the third. Now, the biggest mistake folks are going to make with this one is they're, not going to either, they're either not going to put the 3 with the 2, so they'll make it 2x. So here, let's write this. Wrong answers. Wrong answers folks will do is, the first one is they'll do 2x to the third. The second thing they'll do is they'll do 2 times 3, so they'll make this 6x to the third. Those are really going to be your two biggest mistakes that, I, that you'll see. These are both wrong. The correct thing you have to do is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8x to the third. So again, showing you why over here, we take our numbers and we multiply those. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 then we take our variables, multiply those, x to the third. Same thing. All right, let's look at our negative exponent. Basically, what a negative exponent means is that means that you need to take that, that base and that exponent and put them on bottom. And when you put them on bottom, so what I mean by that is you make it the reciprocal. When you put that on the reciprocal, you actually make the symbol positive. So a to the negative m equals 1 over a to the m only works when a doesn't equal 0, because remember, we can't divide by 0. So really, what does that mean? Well, x to the negative third is the same thing as x, o, or sorry, 1 over x to the third. 2 over y to the negative second, well, this is the negative second. So that means we need to do the reciprocal, which really all that means is we're going to take that and put it on top. The 2 stay the same because it has nothing, so this becomes 2 times y to the second. So just take it piece by piece. So first thing I'm going to look at is the 5. Do I have anything to go with the 5? Is it changing? Is anything happening? No. That's going to stay the same, so I'm going to make it just 5. Now I'm going to look at my x to the 4th. Sorry, x to the negative 4th. Since it's a negative 4th, I know I need to put that down on the bottom and make it a positive power. Then I'm going to look at my y's. I have nothing there to change, so it's just going to become y. And last but not least, I'm going to look at my x, or sorry, my z. 
nothing changes there, so that stays on the bottom. So my actual way I would write this, just in one fourth way, 5y over x to the fourth z. In one color there for you. All right, let's keep going, showing some more examples. Now, anything raised to the power of 0 equals 1. That doesn't hold true for 0, but we won't talk about that in this video. You can go ahead and research it online if you'd like to, but anything else raised to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. So if you look at this, this expression here, you guys can look and see 100,000 x cubed times y to the 345th times z to the smiley face. All of that raised to the power of 0. Well, what's my face? Who cares? It's going to equal 1. Plain and simple. Anything except for 0 raised to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. All right, next thing we're going to do is talk about the quotient of powers. Again, sorry if I'm going fast, but go ahead and feel free to pause, rewatch anything. Quotient of powers, a to the m divided by a to the nth. What you do with those is you, div or you subtract your exponents, and they have to have the same bases. Again, look at that. It's a to the mth, a to the nth. It only works with similar bases. So let's look at z to the third over z. Well, there's nothing there, but really it's z to the first. So z to the third over z to the, to the first is really that becomes z to the 3 minus 1. So my actual answer is z squared. Now, one way to look at it is you can look and see, okay, which one's the higher number? Is the higher exponent on top or the higher no exponent on bottom? And that way you should know where it's going to end up. So I have two ways of doing this with this problem. I could do it the same way I did it. So z to the first minus 3, well, that equals z to the negative second. And really, that is going to equal z, sorry, 1 over z squared. Or I could look and I could see, OK, I know that I have a larger number on bottom here. Or sorry, a larger exponent on bottom. So I know that my numbers are going to end up on the bottom and then subtract 3 minus 1, so really I end up with 1 over z cubed. That way in the green there might be a little bit tricky at first, but once you get that down, you're going to want to know how to do that because when you get trickier problems, that's going to make life easier for you. All right, so now when we have a fractional, so a power of a quotient, so basically if you take a quotient, which means fraction, division, right, a divided by b, and you raise it to the mth power, Really, what you can do is you can distribute that m through to both pieces. And let's show why before I actually do that over here. Because really, 2 thirds squared means I'm doing 2 thirds times 2 thirds, which you know when we multiply, we multiply across. So 2 times 2 is 2 squared over 3 times 3 is 3 squared. And notice, all we have to do is know our rule up here, the power of a quotient, that squared goes through to both pieces which means that we simplify this to 4 ninths, and there's our answer. Again, you got to make sure that b is not equal to 0, because then we get dividing by 0, and we can't do that. All right, let's do some tougher problems. We have to do more than one property here. We have a lot of different properties we have to look at. So the first thing I would do in this problem is I'd get rid of the parentheses, and what I have to do there is I have to go and look at my quotient to, or sorry, my product to a product, which means I distribute that squared through to each piece. So really it becomes x to the negative sixth, y to the to the sixth. Sorry, I almost forgot to do that one. And then nothing changes on the bottom, so this becomes x to the fifth, y to the sixth. Now I'm going to look at it piece by piece, variable by variable. I have x to the negative sixth over x to the fifth. Well, that means that I need to take that down, so really this becomes x to the negative 6 minus 5, because it's a quotient, right? So it really becomes x to the negative 11th, which means it becomes 1 over x to the 11th. All right, now we have to look at our y values. If we look here, you guys can notice it's the same thing divided by the same thing. So y to the 6 divided by y to the 6, you know that's 1, right? Or you could take this and you could do the same thing we did over here, the quotient rule. y to the 6 minus 6 equals, whoop. Well, 6 minus 6 equals 0, so this becomes y to the 0th, and we know that that becomes 1. So really, what do we have? Well, we have 1 over x to the 11th times 1. So really, our actual answer is 1 over x to the 11th. So really, all you need to do in that scenario is take it piece by piece. Slow down. It's not too difficult. 
It's just making sure you remember all the rules. Let's try another one here where it's a little bit more difficult. So now this one, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to expand out. So multiply piece by piece. The 7 doesn't have anything. It's just the 7. There's no other constants anywhere. Now we're going to multiply our y times, sorry, coefficients, not constants. y times our y. So we have y to the second times y to the to the negative fourth. Remember, when we multiply, we really add those. So y to the 2 plus negative 4. And then we're going to do our z's times each other. 5, sorry, z to the fifth plus negative 1. Now we do our adding here. We get 7y to the negative second, z to the fourth. Now we have to change our y here because it's a negative. So it becomes 7, not z first, 7z to the fourth over y squared. All right, I'm going to do one last, one last tricky example here. Um, again, I haven't been listing the properties I use. I you guys could do that if you want to to make sure you understand, but I'm just going through and showing how I would do it. Now, in this one, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could distribute that cube through to each piece, top and bottom, that means, or you could simplify first and then do that. I personally want to simplify because I want to work with smaller numbers. So what I mean by simplify is I'm going to look at the variables on the inside of the parentheses. So x to the fourth over x to the third, we have the higher, bigger number on top, so that means I do 4 minus 3, so we're going to end up with x to the first on top. Now I'm going to look at my y values, and I notice something. That y to the negative second, that really should make it go to the bottom. So y to the sixth, y to the negative, or sorry, to the second goes on the bottom. That's what happens there. So that means that really I'm going to end up with y to the eighth on the bottom, and then I'm going to bring that piece down there. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to remember my rule that that cube has to go to each piece, so it becomes x cubed over y to the 24th. Power to a power, we multiply. So there's my fully simplified version. You could do it a different way. That's the way I chose to do it. That's all I'm going to do for this video. So make sure you guys let me know if you have questions. Rewatch the video if you guys need to. And pause where you need to.